the day that this sofa is not a dark gray will be the best day of my life. Body typing has been a tool that's been used for many years as a way to categorize women and teach them how to dress. And most recently, the Kibbe method has taken off online. However, let me tell you a secret. I'm skeptical about body categorizing as a way of helping us dress. So I thought I'd talk about it. Let's chat. So back to the beginning, where did it start? We've been categorizing women's bodies for centuries. All of the body typing methods, including Kibbe, originate with and are based on this ideal women's body that we should all have. Don't get me wrong, that ideal has morphed throughout centuries. Even in the Venus figurines, which were made 23 to 25,000 years ago, the women still had these hourglass figures. We're talking big boobs and big bums. And obviously that ideal has changed over time. It hasn't always been this perfect hourglass proportionality. For example, a lot of the Renaissance paintings feature women with slightly smaller boobs, but bigger hips, bigger tummies, bigger bums. But it is not a coincidence that near all historic depictions of women's bodies in art have been nude. But the nudes are good for something because they can show us how we viewed women's bodies in the past and how society perceived the ideal body for women. Obviously, this has consequences. Women have changed their bodies to fit the ideal for centuries centuries. The three key examples I can think of are corsets, dieting, and obviously most recently BBLs. And with women specifically, it's been associated with developing soft power, influence, and acceptance. So there's such a clear reason why we yearn to look like the current ideal. And many methods have been developed over the years to get us looking more like this ideal body, this slim hourglass. I'll say it again, the ideal body type has changed throughout history, but I would argue that consistently an hourglass shape has been favored. I actually couldn't find anything online about the origins of the classic body type categorizations of apple, pear, and hourglass. There doesn't seem to be a history of them, but they are the key terms used in Western society to classify different body shapes of women. But in the 1980s, David Kibbe, who is a Manhattan-based stylist, came up with some new ways of categorizing women's bodies. He just wanted to help them dress, and he developed these ideas off of a host of other stylists' initial books that they published, initial ideas as well. There were lots of previous iterations of the Kibbe body types. He is just the man, the name that made it popular. And so concepts like yin and yang, which are baked into Kibbe's method and are often criticized, aren't actually originally from him. Even the archetypes, dramatic, natural, romantic, gamine, 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 I'm not entirely sure, were originated by a whole different woman by the name of Harriet Tilden McJimsey, who was an Iowa State professor. So Kibbe built on these ideas and then published a book in the 80s and made them his own. So initially Kibbe created 13 body types, which he then narrowed down to 10 and he gave instructions on how to dress each one. The Kibbe body types are based on this understanding of yin and yang, yin being smoothness, curves, softness, and yang, being harder lines, angles, and edges. And the balance of each of those determines your personal body type in his 10 categories. And then by dressing according to Kibbe's guidelines, you can balance your body shape. Post pandemic, the Kibbe method has been taken into the hands of the internet and kind of made into a pseudoscience of sorts by like Kibbe fundamentalists. He is often seen as like the only official system to use and he kind of actively approves sometimes. He's in certain group chats and Facebook chats of like the official Kibbe method, which were made by fans, but he will actively participate. He's only 66. That's actually a wild quote I found. <laughs> he described himself to the New York Times as disconnecting from numerical ages years ago. So maybe 55 in spirit. But yeah, the Kibbe method in gaining popularity and gaining a fan base has kind of become a little bit pseudoscientific in recent years. There's a lot of talk about geometric harmony, dressing for your lines, and of course the yin and yang methodology. I can already tell this video is gonna piss some people off, but hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. I mean, the first issue to talk about in the Kibbe method is the lack of inclusivity. When I first looked online at the Kibbe body types, they all looked the same to me. They are all slim. They're all presented as white in all the diagrams. And generally I don't see much difference in the proportions either. And it may be obvious, but they don't account for nuances like plus size or disability. And I think it just shows how influenced Kibbe was by an 80s lens when he was making his book. While the body types may vary slightly, the fundamental underpinning is of the way the body was seen in the 1980s in America. It is such a thin archetype. It is almost saying to the participant, this is what you will look like at your skinniest. And I don't think it's necessarily a conscious choice that was made by Kibbe. I just think this was the outlook of 1980s America. It just informed his book. 
It was just the state of society. And just imagine if he'd actually shown the archetypes on a true range of bodies. Not only would he have been wildly before his time, I think the heads of 1980s America would have exploded. I think he would have been ostracized for normalizing those bodies in a society that was terrified of fat. In a society where for every celebrity it was a rite of passage to release a diet book. On the topic of the size and shape of bodies, bodies change. I know, radical information. Almost definitely won't be the same body shape at 25 that you are at 50. And the Kibbe method also doesn't seem to take into account aging. And honestly, some of the language in the Kibbe method isn't the most complimentary to more curvy body types. I don't know if I want to be described as fleshy or having width. It actually feels ridiculous to say out loud. And again, I do not think this was the intent of Kibbe. I just think he wanted to empower women. He wanted to be as neutral as possible, but no matter who he was, he was still looking through this lens where people wanted to be white and thin and able-bodied and young. And those negative connotations buried in the words of the Kibbe method are more obvious to us now because we're looking back 40 years in the past. And it just illustrates how the Kibbe method is built on a foundation of how the world saw women's bodies in the eighties. So then my question is, why has this method gained popularity recently? Helping women deal with fear, soothing anxieties, giving people a sense of self, I think it's become increasingly important in the rapidly increasing trend cycle of the 2020s. Our trend cycle's only speeding up, and I think it's making people feel really unstable in their sense of self. Just as you think you know what you like, a new micro trend comes along, and just off you go again. I'm speaking from experience here. I am 100% a victim of this. I think I know what I like. Something else comes along, my boat gets rocked. So I think that's why there's been this rise in popularity of categorizing the body. We're talking color theory, we're talking kibbe. There's this strong desire to seek out rules, order, and ultimately security to preserve your sense of self or rediscover your sense of self in a world, and specifically a fashion world, that is changing so fast at the moment. And when you search the Kibbe method, it speaks for itself. On the first page of Google are just loads and loads of capsule wardrobe blogger posts and all these minimalist blogs and people who are trying to help you refine and hone down and regain that sense of order. The idea is having limitations when you buy will make you happy. It's guidelines, it's a system. Merv Emmer, who's a professor of English at Oxford and the author of The Personality Brokers, The Strange History of Myers-Briggs and the Birth of Personality Testing, said to the New York Times that the language of typing systems can help to externalize what feels interior what feels private, what feels invisible about your sense of self. This is a journey to find identity, but I think it's also a journey to find security. Personality tests can bring us this sense of identity and a sense of security in our identity. This desire for a secure sense of self can be seen as empowering, but honestly, I just think it's another plaster on the wound of sartorial capitalism. It's just giving women a false sense of security in an ever-changing world. Where the pressure to present positively to others through our clothes is particularly important and volatile right now and encouraging us to buy more and giving us a false sense of security. And ironically, they actually end up feeding us into this hamster wheel of micro trends that we're desperately trying to opt out of. And not only that, but subscribing to the Kibbe method makes us more aware of characteristics that we maybe previously weren't as aware of. And not only that, but it makes them determining features of who we are, which I think can just lead to insecurity. And when we create new wardrobe rules for ourselves, ultimately, and I will attest to this, it encourages us to do a big changeover old things out, new things in. And I don't think having a clear out is necessarily always problematic, especially if you're rehoming a lot of your items and doing what you can to make sure your clothes don't end up in landfill, for example, doing swaps with your friends, selling your clothes, recycling old fabrics, sometimes donating, but mainly donating clothes that you know are likely to be sold. Basically making old items as useful as possible. But I think we're in risky territory when a new system makes you want to clear out all your clothes and start again. And don't get me wrong, I've made a lot of wardrobe content. I've made a lot of decluttering videos in my time. I am no angel here. I just think through my twenties, I've learned that it's so important to take a slow and responsible approach to this. And I worry that when the initial high wears off of having found a solution, you'll realize that you were just too ruthless and it will cost you, literally. And I also think the limitations of a body typing method like Kibbe can make you more insecure in the things you do like. Like what if one of my favorite items that makes me feel really confident doesn't actually fit into the Kibbe method for my body type? If it doesn't fit into the rules, should I discard it? I think it brings up larger questions around knowledge and personal taste. Can I trust myself to pick my clothes? Do I know what looks good on my body? 
Am I wrong? Getting in the deep end, the full philosophy here. Is it possible to experience freedom within rules? Like, is it actually possible to find freedom in a system that categorizes you and reinforces body expectations? Like, should we just accept that we're all trying to do our best in a complex, problematic system? Or do we just disregard all expectations and all methods. Ironically, Kivi says it's impossible to categorize yourself as it's impossible for you to look at your own body objectively. He encourages you to go to a Kivi specialist who can help you work out your body type, which will cost you some money. Not only this, okay, we really are in the deep end, but body typing is rooted in eugenics. Again, I'm not saying that anyone who partakes in body type methods or has created them knows about this, but I just want to bring it to your attention. In the early 20th century, psychologist William Sheldon theorized that the way your body was shaped was reflective of your personality. And you'll recognize the somatotypes that he came up with. Also, I've never read the word somatotypes until I made this video. But you'll know these, they're the ectomorph, the mesomorph and the endomorph. First of all, his methods were condemned. He was photographing naked college students under the guise of a completely different project. He said he was doing a study on posture correction. And then obviously he concluded that ectomorphs who were the tall thin types were really shy, very nervous, and muscular mesomorphs were domineering and independent, and soft endomorphs were lazy and desperate. A lot of his papers are locked away because they contain racist ideas. Luckily, those views didn't gain popularity, but unfortunately, the ones connecting body type to personality did. Even in modern studies done today, we can see that those ideas about body types are still really prominent in people's minds. And even when you take specific traits or characteristics of people, we also prescribe personality ideals to those as well, we are concerningly consistent in those assumptions. And to talk about soft power again, we consider the most telling trait of a woman her waist to hip ratio. And of course, the bigger someone is, the more negative traits we associate with their personality. One study really picked out carelessness and disorganization. In Kibbe's 1987 book, he also equates personality traits with the body types. Romantics, who are known to be curvy, possess extraordinary human empathy. And gamines have bubbly energy. These are positive attributes. There's nothing unkind about them. But I would say that the curvier ones kind of fit the stereotypes of mothering nurturing qualities and just in general they're informed by characteristics that people believe that women should have ultimately once you start equating personality to body shape it just gets so reductive and i just think it starts to negate some of those positives that body typing can bring to the consumer like the senses of security and the order ultimately the kibby body type system and every body system that's come since has been focused on conforming your body to the hourglass figure which is the most universally accepted body for a woman. I just think there's something fundamentally contradictory about a system that preaches self-acceptance and loving yourself as you are, but ultimately the whole goal of the system is to make you look like everyone else. I totally relate to that feeling of being lost in your personal style and desperately wanting some kind of help and support in finding a sense of identity and a sense of security and confidence in your clothes. But in my personal opinion, I would discourage you from leaning into body typing as a route out of that anxiety. It can feel like it's soothing your anxieties when you already feel limited, but I genuinely think it's actually increasing them and then limiting you further in what you feel like you can actually wear. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a like if you did and subscribe if you're new. I mainly talk about clothes, but I also do a little bit about culture, a little bit about music in there. And I vlog my life in London. Finally, a massive thank you to Squarespace for working with me on this video. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. I've had my Squarespace site for nearly two years. Two years! I use it as a base so people can go to my page and just see what I'm about. But then I also have a store on my site where I sell my Lightroom presets and I have a blog. You can start with the template. I started with the template and it was super easy to customize. And now it's even easier because they've brought in Fluid Engine. It's a next generation website design system that makes customizing your template effortless. Squarespace's analytics suite is really good. If you're thinking about launching your first site, now is the time. And I can make it a bit sweeter for you as well. I have a little code. If you want 10% off your first website or domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash Lucy Moon or use the code Lucy Moon at checkout. I hope it helps you on the way to starting your new site. There's just so much functionality in Squarespace. There's even email campaigns. Like it is so versatile. You can set up online courses, like whatever you want to do, Squarespace can accommodate. Anyway, the link's in the description when you want to launch it's there for you. Thank you again Squarespace and thank you for watching. I will see you in my next video.